Hello everyone, in this short step-by-step -step video, I will show you how to set up a Polycom VVX phone with SIP service or voice over IP service. That's the service you need to have for the phone that will allow it to make and receive telephone calls. And for this demonstration, I'll be using Callcentric as the service. So it'll be pretty much a step-by-step -step if you're using Callcentric. If you're using some other service, the ideas will be pretty much the same, but there might be a few variations that you'll need to uh, figure out on your own. So what do we need? Well, any Polycom VVX family phone, this is a 500. You could have a 200, a 300, a 400, a 600, and then there's all submodels within there. You'll need to have some type of network connection. So that means you need to have a, a network connection that leads to the internet. And you'll also need the power adapter for the phone. So begin by plugging in the network cord to, there's two network jacks on the bottom. The one you need is the one Mark LAN. It's the one that's got kind of the picture of like a little stick with some little round circles coming off of it. It's also labeled LAN. On some of them, it's not even labeled with a word. It might just, it might just have that symbol there. Also, you need the power. Now, to note, if you plug this in and the power starts coming on, it means your switch is providing uh, power over Ethernet, so you don't need the power cord. But for most people, you will need the power cord. Plug in the power cord. You'll need to have your Polycom phone. If it's brand new, then you're probably in good shape. It means it's already you know factory uh, defaulted. However, if this is a used phone that you maybe bought online or something, uh, you'll need to factory default that. Rather than going into that right now, I'm just going to put a link in the video. So if you look up in the corner, you'll see a little uh, like a little icon there. That leads to the video that shows you how to factory default the uh, Polycom phones. All right, right now this phone has no service on it. So before we can even start getting in here and programming, we need to stop, go over to Callcentric, set up our account information, collect that, and then we'll come back to the phone and put that in. Okay, so let's go to Callcentric. Uh, there's a link in the description of how to get to Callcentric's website. And when you get to Callcentric, you need to log into your account, or if you don't have one, create one. Uh, Callcentric is easy to set up, and they don't do contracts, and it's just pay as you go. So, um, and and the call per minute rate is really cheap. So once you've got your account set up, click on extensions, and then add extension. And you'll need to uh, uh, choose a this drop down here where it says extension. Choose any one of those numbers that shows up, and then that completes your user, your SIP username. Um, we'll need to write that down because we're going to use that on the phone as the um, the line address and the uh, authoriz authorization user ID. Okay, so we need that. Also, we need to set up a password, and that needs to be at least uh, six characters, but no more than 15, and has to have one uppercase letter, one lowercase letter, and one number. And you can also use some uh, special symbols like pound and, and exclamation point if you want to make it more complicated. Uh, the internal calling uh, extension name, all that is is just a name that will show up when you call other call-centric phones. That will not determine what shows up as your caller ID name when you call other you know, outside phone users. Uh, and then also the caller ID to send, that's a drop down. And you may not have anything in there yet if you just created a new account, but what you can do, uh, if you go look in the help section, there's a thing where they talk about how you can uh, verify that you own a phone number, say for instance your cell phone or your home phone, and you can uh, you can then have that available to you as, a, as an optional caller ID to send when you make calls from this Polycom phone that we're setting up. Okay, collect, uh, set up all that information, write down the auth ID, write down the authentication password, and then click save, and then now let's go back over to the phone. Hey, we're back at the phone now. We're going to put those credentials in that we just got done doing uh, on the call-centric website. So on the VBX phones, you have this little house key right here. You hit that. Some phones have a touch screen. Some phones have a little navigation circle right here with the up, down, left, and right. We want to go to settings. And we want to go to advanced and then we want to put in the password of four five six and enter now four five six didn't work it's possible that your phone is either not new or it's not been factory defaulted you need to go back to the spot earlier in the video where i talked about showed you the link to uh, do the factory default so now we need to go to administration settings uh, for your network configuration uh, in the ethernet menu check to see if your dhcp is enabled 
For most people, DHCP enabled is the preferred setting. If you're a little bit more of a networking person and you want to use a static IP address, then that's fine. Um, but uh, DHCP is, is good for most uh, beginners. And then go back. And then we want to go back again and go to line configuration. And we want to go to address. And we want to put in that 177 number. Uh, when you type on these Polycom phones, you have to choose the mode. See where the mode key is there? You have to choose the mode to tell it whether you're going to be putting in small letters, numbers, uppercase letters, etc. So make sure you choose the appropriate one. So I'm going to be using numbers, so I choose the number mode. And then as you enter it, it'll be numbers. And then if you're a letter, then you can spell out, you know, by hitting the keys. Uh, so I'm going to put in the address, and then I'll be right back. Okay, I put in my address for line keys. I want to choose uh, two. You can have more. Uh, I like to do two just because it gives me, you know, a line to receive calls and, and then I can put them in hold and make another call on my second line. All right. And then I um, want to go down to um, authentication. And on authentication, use login credentials should be set to no. And then for domain, we're going to put callcentric.com. User ID is going to be that 1777 number that we just used a second ago. And then also the password is going to be that password we made when we were in the uh, call centric uh, uh, extension setup. So I'm going to put that stuff in. I'll be right back. So when you're done, you should have your domain of callcentric.com. You should have the user ID in and then also your password. And then let's go back. And then we want to go to SIP protocol. And in SIP protocol, uh, we want that to be enabled. And then uh, just to save some time here, I already populated this. In server one, you're gonna to wanna to have callcentric.com as the address. The port is gonna be 5060. Register is gonna be set to yes. And UDP only is gonna be your transport, okay? Rather than have you watch me type these in, I just went ahead and, and did these already. So callcentric.com is your address, port 5060, register set to yes, and your transport needs to be changed to UDP only, all right? And then go back and keep going back until you get to the spot where it says save config. So you've got exit without save, save config, and resume setup. We want save config. All right. And what it'll do is it'll reach out to the, uh, the call centric um, server and do what's called registering. And when it registers, the way you can tell it's registered is you'll see the phone number and it might either have like a picture of a phone next to it or it'll have like with this little envelope, which means there's a voicemail. I guess I must have a voicemail waiting there. Um, and then you can tap the line and you get dial tone and you can dial a number. And if your call goes through, you're all set up. Um, Hi. The Thanks. way you'll know if it, you did something wrong is you'll have like, like kind of like a little X right here next to the next to the line. So, um, or you can't make a phone call, or when you try to make a phone call, it does this weird thing where it says, put in SIP URI. So go back and check your settings again. Um, also, this time should eventually uh, set itself. If it doesn't, it might mean that your uh, DNS is not set correctly. So you might have to go in and set your DNS, but uh, you can Google how to do that. But that's the basics to get you set up on Callcentric. So hope you enjoy it, and I hope this video was helpful. Leave me comments. Let me know how it's going for you. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like what I did, give me a thumbs up. Thanks so much.